All right, so we finally have uh, had a chance to get out here with the horses. We've been out with them a couple other times, but not really done much. Yeah, just like combed them and stuff. Yeah. Them. So we got these horses. We, we rescued these from, uh, uh, an, I guess, a, a distant neighbor, uh, somebody in a neighboring town. A, a friend of ours had a neighbor who was just moving and needed to get rid of these horses. And, and so we, we snagged them up, uh, two, two uh, purebred Arabians. Uh, they just have never been really broken they've been halter broken and they've been led around a little bit but they really didn't spend a whole lot of time with them as far as training them they're they're not saddle broken or anything like that they're not rideable um and so we've got uh we've got a work cut out for us don't we yeah yeah is she eating you yeah on all the grass and my feet <laughs> so uh kayla and i have uh kayla really wants to ride the horses and and i do too um instead of just basically feeding them i want to actually do something with them and so We've been trying to get out here and, and just lead them around. Uh, today we were just practicing, you know, leading the horses around and just getting them to kind of follow us. Uh, we've been looking online at YouTube videos and different things and trying to figure out how to how to train these guys. But how did uh, Snickers do? She did. She did really good. Yeah, I, I mean, she following more, you or? Yeah, I think it's just more of me. I need to work on like being in control instead of her being in control. Okay. She needs to, the horse needs to train you. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, so we don't, we're not experienced with this. Obviously, this is the first time that you have really worked with horses. I worked with horses as a kid, but I, I certainly didn't train them by myself. My parents and other people did that. Um, I rode them a lot, but uh, I didn't have to do a lot of the training. And so we've got a lot of learning to do ourselves um, on how to how to get these horses. So we've watched a lot of YouTube videos and other like training things and read a lot, but. Uh, Everybody's got different opinions, I think, and you just have to sometimes just get out there and work with the horses and see what what works and what doesn't. So, but I think leading them around with the treats, you know, using the treats as a reward yeah. when they when they moved with us, that seemed to work. Yeah, it worked. I mean, Sugar wouldn't even move. I've never been able to walk her anywhere. Uh, Sugar is the white one. Uh, well, the dirty white one. <laughs> but, uh, and today I was able to, by the end of maybe half an hour, we were walking around pretty much freely. She would follow me and, and walk with me. And so, so we need to look at saddles, 
uh, we can get a youth saddle and get a, an adult saddle and we'll we'll go riding. We got some trails now we can. Yeah. So it'll be a little bit of time. Maybe by the dead of winter we'll have them trained. <laughs> yeah, really. So uh, I'm just going to kind of show you around the, the pasture, show you how what's been working, where we've had the horses and talk a little about that stuff. Um, and also talk about what my plans are to kind of make a permanent home for them here. Uh, we weren't really set up for horses and so we've got some, some work ahead of us. There's a parade of animals following me around. So one of the biggest struggles that we've had in this pasture is there. this is where they they fed the animals, which is where we feed the animals too. We've got the watering uh, trough over there and we feed the goats in the bucket and feed the horses up there. And a lot of times I'll throw bales of hay out here. I'm sure that's just what they did too. But they used, so there's a couple different types of twine that you'll see on bales of hay. Um, this is uh, the poly twine and it's a plastic basically uh, twine. Um, they're blue or red. I'm not sure what the difference is, but hi. But this is what most of your, your balers will use, your modern balers, and it's, they, they really run well with this plastic twine. And the problem with that is, as you can see, is that you, if you're just throwing bales out in a pasture, the horses will eat all the hay around and leave the twine, and then you have an enormous pile of twine everywhere in your pasture. And that stuff will never break down. Um, I have been here for three years. Every year I spend you know, time out here, every time I'm out in this pasture, coming through here and finding all of the twine that's, that's out here. And it's like it grows. Uh, it just, I mean, this stuff's been out here forever and it'll be out here forever. It won't break down. One of the advantages I have of the older baler is that I use the sisal twine. And so I also throw bales of hay right out here for the goats and stuff like that, right on the ground most of the time or in the hay feeder, um, depending on which pasture. I don't have hay feeders everywhere. And, uh, but this stuff will break down. And as soon as it gets wet, you know, if a horse gets this caught on them or whatever, it breaks. It's, it's not, I mean, it's strong, but it's not as strong as the plastic stuff. So uh, it's not as much of a hazard. Now I still come through here and clean this stuff out if I see it, but if I miss some of it and it gets buried in this moth out here, it won't be here longer than, you know, one, one season and, and it's gone. In fact, there is so much of that twine out here that I've picked up over the years. I, I literally brought a trash can back here specifically to just throw that twine in all the time. This is just what Kayla and I grabbed today in about 10 or 15 minutes. And that thing is also filled. Sugar and Snickers. So sugar is a little younger. They're both uh, purebred Arabian horses. And we just had the farrier out take care of their nails. They were, they are their, their hooves, they're not nails, but uh, their hooves. And they were, they were pretty much past due to get trimmed for sure. Um, but they, they weren't looking too bad. Uh, unfortunately, this girl is so untrained that we could not get her to stand still to get those rear hooves. And so uh, Fair is going to come back out and we're going to deal with that at another time. But I'll have to get him into the barn so we can really corral her in and teach her that it's all right. And she's just nervous about everything. And it looks like these guys had their halters on uh, at, at when they were younger for maybe too long. And she even has what looks like a little, a little cut on her nose. I don't have any carrots. I know. And she has like a little, little stitch marks on her nose. So I, <laughs> they think I have treats. I don't have treats, guys. They've been out here on our biggest pasture um, and, it, and they have mowed this whole entire place down. Plus there are five goats out here. But the, uh, the goats will eat, you know, all the weeds. They'll eat the nettles, the thistles. They eat all the poison ivy, the poison oak, the leaves off the trees. I mean, you can look across this pasture and they have pretty much browsed everything up as high as they can reach across the entire pasture. There's nothing left that they can reach. No leaves on any trees, no low branches. <laughs> they, they got it all. Uh, and that's just what the goats will do. And then the horses, of course, will eat the, uh, the grass and stuff like that. There's plenty of grass still left in there here for them. Um, but we have been supplementing them with some hay. Uh, you know, maybe every few days we'll throw a bale of hay in here and, and give them a little extra to mow down on. This was all completely overgrown when we moved in. All this pasture through here, you couldn't see from the house, you know, back here at all. And uh, this was just completely overgrown. And the, the goats and, the, and we had pigs out here and the, the horses have cleared all this brush, cleared all this stuff out of here, knocked stuff down. And uh, of course, all their manure is fertilizing this as they go. This hill right here, this was, uh, they dug out this hole kind of over here. I don't know if they're trying to make a watering hole or something like that. 
um, and then they they piled all the dirt it looks like right here and this is where the future chicken operation will be and i talked about this last year but this is where i'm going to level out a spot on the top of this hill um, I might chop that tree down, I'm not sure, and uh, level a spot out and we'll build a big chicken coop up here. It'll be permanent, but I will let the chickens then free range in this entire pasture out here. They'll keep them away from the house, which is over there, um, and then they've got about four acres of pasture where the chickens can come through here and break down manures, uh, kill their bugs, parasites, and other things out of the pastures. Um, scratch through things and help to stir things up and spread the, the grass seeds and other things around and the, and the chickens can really do a good work um, through a pasture like this as long as they have enough space. Before I forget, I want to invite everyone, if you're in the Michigan area in, uh, well, September 21st, it's coming up next Saturday at the Frankenmuth Expo Center. There, there's the Michigan uh, Preparedness Expo and I'd love to have you guys come out and I'd love to see some of you that are followers or watch the channel. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool little event. I've never been there. I've been following things online. It looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. But I will be up there at 12 o'clock uh, for a little presentation on uh, sustainable living and things. So I'd love to have you join me for that. And uh, of course, we'll be there all day. We're gonna have a booth. I'm not sure what will be in the booth besides hopefully just us, <laughs> but we'll be there to hang out and maybe we'll, I don't know, give away some maple syrup or something. Uh, for, for some people that, uh, that show up and follow the channel. So I'd love to see you guys. Even if you're, I don't, if you're in Minnesota, you can make it. It's not that far. Yes. Yes, that's where, that's where the treats were. They're, they're gone now. I'm gonna try to eat my pocket too. It's unbelievable. It's truly an endless battle. Real good horses. Uh, they are they are super sweet for sure, and I think they'll be pretty easily trained once we get to work on them. Snickers is a little bit older, and she sure is a lot easier to work with than than uh, the old sugar here. She's she's a little feistier. She doesn't want to listen. So, but we'll break her in and keep working with her. So I did do a lot of uh, electric fencing in here. I've got a wire that uh, I don't know if you can see it there it goes along maybe about a two feet up from the ground all the way around. That keeps these guys from putting their heads through the fence and going through all this rusted broken down fencing and then I put a wire around the top and that just keeps the horses from leaning their heads over the fence and breaking the fencing down. So I actually have uh, a smart outlet hooked up at, in the garage where the, the fence controller is and that way I can use my phone, my smartphone, whenever I'm out here I need to get in the pasture, work with the animals, jump over the fence, fix something or whatever. I don't have to go up to the garage which is way up there. You know I could be I could be way back in the in the end of the pasture somewhere and uh, you know I need to turn the fence off and so now I can use my phone and just hit that no matter where I'm at turn the fence off get in do what I need to do and then turn it back on when I leave. So one of the things that I have to do is uh, before winter comes is is deal with getting these horses access to the barn and so we've got these nice barn stalls that were built for for horses there's you know I have feeders in here hay feeders and um, there's a little barnyard out there where the ducks and the pigs are right now. Uh, the pigs and the ducks will be moved, or at least the pigs will for sure. And uh, I'm going to have to build a big chase that uh, leads from the pasture, which is, I don't know, maybe three, 400 feet away from the barn. I need to build fencing and a chase that comes over and gates and all kinds of stuff so I can get the tractors and everything throughout to the hay fields. So it's kind of a big project and it's going to be expensive, but, uh, but I got to do it. I got to get the, the horses access to the barn. Right now, we just put them out there for the summertime. They don't really have, they don't really have a good shelter. They have a shelter they can get in out of the rain, but it's really for the goats and it's not very big. And so uh, they need, they need access to the barn. This barn was built for horses and it's perfect for them. So uh, that's uh, what we need to do. And behind me, you can see the enormous stack of hay. Um, I don't know how many bales this is. I've lost count, but I believe it's about 450 to 500 total bales that we have in here. This should be enough for our pigs, our goats, and our horses through the entire winter. Uh, we didn't sell any hay this year. We had a really bad harvest overall. And so what we have, what you see behind me here is what we have. And so hopefully we'll be able to get through the year without having to buy any hay in the spring so many things to do around here and uh there's just never enough time i'm just trying to fight through all these projects got a lot of heating stuff to do uh this year uh furnace installation new water heater i've got an on-demand water heater to install uh, that's ready to go i have uh, these horses to work with uh, and train i've got this uh, fencing to do to get them into the barn 
We've got water spigots to install, water line to run, electrical line to run, <laughs> greenhouse stuff to do. It just is a pile. And so uh, I do apologize. There has been a lot of updates on the horses. And uh, really since, I don't think I've really done an update on the horses since we got them in the springtime. And so I know a lot of you have been asking about them, but they're still here doing really well. Uh, they're, they're very healthy. Um, all of our goats have been really healthy. We've sold off all the, the babies and uh, we just have the moms here left. And like I said, pretty good chance we've got a new arrival coming to the farm here this week, next week, something like that. We'll see if everything goes through, we may have a, a new animal on the farm. So we'll, uh, we'll introduce you to that uh, if it happens and when. So as always guys, don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's just a little update. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.